Let me open this and make sure these are mine. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> dozens of something? people <laughs> leave their dentures on the floor in a restaurant at any It's event. Florida. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you how. I don't even know what that is. I'll tell you. Yes, sometimes I can't distinguish if it's the German or... Then you yeah. might want to cut that part out about Chuck's pellet. Is that yeah. A cup of coffee with my, with mom. my mom. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a thing. Uh, it's called BioT, I believe. And uh, it basically measures your testosterone and uh, adjusts it. As we age, we lose our testosterone and... They create these pellets that they put under your skin in the fatty part of your butt, and they slowly dissolve over three to six months. And um, it helps your uh, it helps with energy, it helps with libido, it helps with brain fog, which is why I'm interested in it. And um, I don't yeah, really want to talk about feel libido younger. with my mom, Chuck. I mean, the brain no? fog is fine. No. Well, that's okay. all right. I'm a mature adult. Um, <laughs> It's like progesterone with women. When you reach a certain age, your body no longer produces it. And so you and you get it artificially, whatever it takes, Chuck. You don't need to tell me anymore, but I hope it works, whatever it is. Thank you. I appreciate well, it. Well, this I'll thing, you know. I, apparently, this the testosterone is, is also important for women and has an impact yeah. on, on women. In fact, I think, I mean, wasn't that the story? Didn't this originate with... Um, you know, yeah. Well, my sister's been on it for like a a year now, and she swears by it. And so does uh, the woman that put the 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 pellet in her, because <laughs> oh, well, she's been yeah. doing it even longer. Well, if it works, fine. Use it. Do it. Well, I'm going to look so, into it because this yeah, is a. I mean, it's great content for one thing. If it if it improves your life, Chuck. I mean, obviously that's awesome. But if you fly back east for the sole purpose of getting a pellet put in your ass, we're going to talk about it right here at, at great length. <laughs> All right. At great length. I can assure you. Well, great. We'll do that then. But I want to hear about the wedding. Didn't you guys go to a great oh, wedding? That's right. Uh, in the last podcast, Mike, we talked about the wedding, remember? I and remember it was... vividly. Yeah. It, and I, I'm just going to say this out loud because I don't want to forget. We also talked about that napkin holder and the stuff dad's making in wood shop. So don't oh, right. let me forget because I only want to talk to you for another 15 minutes because we're trying to keep this thing down to a half hour. But Oh, then you yeah. might want to cut that part out about Chuck's pellet in his ass. Yeah. <laughs> I would kidding? recommend that. Are you kidding? That's the title. <laughs> That's going to be the title of this thing. Coffee with mom and a pellet in Chuck's ass. Oh, whoopee. Film at 11. Wee. Yeah, the wedding was great, Chuck. We all descended into South Florida, and uh, it mm -hmm. was it was fun. I mean, it was weird, like it always is with family, but it was fun. It was, and it was great being with the family, with all with all of our children and grandchildren. It was it was exciting. Oh, but there was one thing that went wrong, and oh, your father lost oh, his right. teeth. In the restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. I forgot. Right where you need him the most. It was hard to get over <laughs> that. Well, he had already used them. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's good. And <laughs> it was at the rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding. Uh-huh. And so, oh, God, I can remember it like it was this morning. <laughs> we went back to Scott's house where there was a large gathering of family, and it was party time. And we were sitting around having something to eat and drink. And and your father came to me. Oh, Lord, he looked like death warmed over. He was white as a sheep. He said, something's happened. I did something awful. Oh, my God. I said, oh, John, whatever it is, it'll be all right, hon. We'll, we'll get past it. it. We'll deal with it. What happened? <laughs> he said, I've lost my teeth. I've lost my dentures, and I think that I think I might have left him in a napkin at the restaurant. <clears throat> so I said, "And how did that happen?" <laughs> so he said, "Well, I had the steak, and it was good, but it collected under my plate. So I held my napkin up and pulled my plate out to dislodge the 
And he said, I forgot to put it back in. I folded oh up the napkin God. and put it back on the table. <laughs> well, so he didn't really lose his teeth. He took them out and, <laughs> and just decided. Misplaced I mean, them. He misplaced, misplaced them. them, yes, as one does oh, mid-meal. It happens all the time. Well, the next day was the wedding. And you know, a wedding is all about pictures. Lots of pictures, lots of smiles. Photographs. Well, I mean, he would have had to smile with his mouth completely closed because his upper plate has three <laughs> teeth on it and one or two are visible in the front. Oh, dear. Oh, anyway, he was just sick, so I called the restaurant right away. And um, and the woman I spoke to said, oh, you know, they've probably been thrown out. I hate to tell you this, but give me your name and telephone number and we will look for them after the restaurant closes. But probably they've gone out with the garbage. <laughs> uh, and how much does this thing cost, by the way? What's the probably plate Probably thousands of dollars to replace mm. it. Oh, God. Terrible. It's hard to say, though, Chuck, which would really chap him worse, you know, not being able to smile at his granddaughter's wedding or, you know, a couple thousand bucks. We're paying the money. Oh, I, <laughs> yes. I got a pretty good idea which one's going to chap him more. <laughs> well, there would be no incentive to smile anyway if he didn't, <laughs> if he had lost his teeth. So the next morning I got up and there was no call. So I called the restaurant and the young lady who answered the phone said, I have good news. We found oh. them on the floor last night as <laughs> we were cleaning. And I said, oh, Thank God. I said, oh, you're a messenger sent from heaven. I said, my husband will be there soon. Well, it was a half hour drive. So Phil, your brother Phil, drove Yeah, I know him. who he is. <laughs> In case you didn't know who Phil was. Well, but there might be some people, the, the dozen oh, or so yes. people who listen to this you, podcast. You know what? Fair point. Fair <laughs> point. <laughs> so he drove dad back to the restaurant. And it was so mm. funny. Dad called me on his cell phone, as he is wont to do. <laughs> Many times whenever we're separated. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, hon, what was the girl's name I'm supposed to look for? And I said, oh, I think, I don't remember, Allison. He said, oh, okay. And then this woman came. He said, Allison? She said, yes. And she said, here it is. Oh, I wonder if I still have that. It was a little brown. Oh, here it is. Look, it was a little... <laughs> A little manila envelope that says dentures with dentures. a smiley face. So dad, so she, she was very happy. and But dad was very reserved. He said, well, wait a minute. Let me open this and make sure these are mine. <laughs> I mean, like Wouldn't dozens of something? people leave their dentures on the floor in a restaurant at any It's given Florida. Time. It's Florida. There's probably a shoebox full of missing teeth somewhere <laughs> uh, in a safe. <laughs> well, like when I lost my purse and my wallet at Walmart, I went to the lost and found, and there were a dozen canes back there. And I'm thinking, what kind of a person forgets their cane when they're out? If you need a cane. The kind then... of person that doesn't really need one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So dad came home and all was well. And um, by the time uh, it was it was time for the wedding, he's, you know, he had... He didn't run them through the dishwasher, but he cleaned them very well. We didn't have a dishwasher at the motel where, hotel where we were staying, so. But he did wash them, and so that ended happily. But I'll tell you, those teeth have been the source of more material for me. One night last week or the week before, Dad went in, had to go to the bathroom, but before he went to the bathroom, he um. He has to take his hearing aids out and his teeth out. Not to go to the bathroom, but he was going to... Yeah. What? I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand his anatomy <laughs> anymore. He was going to shower while he was in there. Okay, so... Wait a minute, he's going to the bathroom in the oh, shower? Oh, there's a shower in the bathroom. So anyway, okay. all of a sudden, I hear him laughing from the bedroom. And I said, mm -hmm. "What? what's funny? He said... I just tried to plug my teeth into my hearing aid charger. <laughs> he had taken out his teeth and put them in the hearing aid charger. 
But they didn't fit, of course. So then he took his hearing aids out and put them. But honestly, that those teeth have been the subject of really good material through the years. Wow. Well, do you remember? Uh, this is a few months back, probably six months ago. But I somebody left their retainer on the water fountain on the bike path. Oh, I read I about that. I read about that on your Facebook page. And now they have their own Instagram account. <laughs> they have an Instagram. So. So I found an expensive looking retainer that somebody had taken out of their mouth and left on top of a water fountain. I don't know why, but they did it. And I know those things cost money. So I took a picture of it and, uh, and I wrote something kind of funny about it from the point of view of the retainer, because why not? Creative Writing 101. That post kind of blew up, but the next day they were still there. And the day after that, they were still there. So I just started writing from the point of view of a retainer who is stuck on a water fountain watching the world go by. And then on the fourth day, somebody picked it up and left me a note in, in an envelope, you know, because at this point, two million people are engaged in a conversation on Facebook about this missing retainer somewhere on the Tiburon Peninsula. And that person assumed the identity of something called Tibby's Teeth. I don't know what that means, but they have an Instagram page now with over 20,000 followers. And the retainer is dispensing advice <laughs> to people with questions about their life. So the person who lost the retainer never did get it back. No, no. The retainer was abandoned, and somebody who was reading this crazy conversation on Facebook took it upon themselves to drive over into this basic area and start walking on the bike path until they found the water fountain with the retainer on it. And then they left me an envelope. This is... Let me, you, you can't make it up. I'm actually not sure who's living a weirder life, you or me. <laughs> it's you, hon. My life is very staid. Okay, look, that's terrific, Mom. Um, anything else you want to share with the gang? It's been a half hour. No, we, to keep we're in a hurry. Sweet. You know, Dad's play opens tonight. Uh, the Winter oh, no. Follies here at the home are tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday. And your father... I'll take pictures, of course. Your father is playing George Washington. Wow. Is that him in that photo? No. No, oh. this, this came with the costume. <laughs> this is his uniform. <laughs> George wow. Washington. Some actor, uh, some actor modeling the George Washington uniform, correct? Obviously. Your father <laughs> is not the man George Washington was because it took quite a bit of alteration to get it down to his oh. size. But, oh, but from what I've read, they each were dealing with teeth that were <laughs> less than satisfying. <laughs> I wonder if George ever left his in a restaurant. I don't know. But anyway, it, the Follies will be cute. There are dozens of residents in it. There's lots of music. Um, the only thing is Dad tends to lapse into a... Um, a German accent every once in a while. And I, I say, John, George wasn't really German. He says, oh, I know, I know. So we'll see what happens tonight. Maybe he's doing like a Hessian thing. You know, the <laughs> Hessians were a big part of winning the American Revolution and dad taught American history. I know he's familiar with the Hessians, so I wonder if the reptilian part of his I'm brain pretty, is channeling a Hessian. I'm pretty well, sure the Hessians fought on the other side, Mike. <laughs> Well, I, I just said they were an important part of the revolution. Yeah. I, I didn't say they were our friends. Okay. Wait, are you sure? Who the Hessians yeah. fight for? The the English. And we got the French involved. Google it. Oh, John. No, no, no. Don't do that. No, I'm the, he's in the shower. No, he's <laughs> with his with his teeth, his his ear, his hearing aids. Without his ears and his teeth. Oh my god. Sorry. You know, we really did span the uh I mean we we went from coyotes to eyes to noses to teeth to a pellet in Chuck's ass all the way back around to a fundraiser for Microworks and now a little bit of history vis-a-vis -vis the Hesh. This is a and George and half George hour. Washington. This is a fundraiser too, because every Sunday we have um concerts here. And you have to pay the performers. So 
this is a fundraiser for our concert series. So it will be well attended. That's terrific. Yeah. I didn't realize that. So so there's a concert series that goes on year round at Oakcrest, and this is one of the things they do to raise money for that. And somehow dad has agreed to dress up like George Washington. Does he have lines? Oh, yes, he does. He has, and he is prone to ad lib, but I told him he really shouldn't ad lib. <laughs> I am the father of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Something like no, that. Dad. No, dad. <laughs> By the way, the Hessians fought for the British. Yes, I was correct about that. 30,000 German were. troops. Sorry, just in this, you know, every now and then, blind squirrel finds a nut. What can I say? I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to give you a, a little something to cling on to. <laughs> I'm just telling you, Chuck, look out for the coyotes, son. <laughs> They're you everywhere. Mr. Blind Squirrel. Mm, yeah, fair. I'll jump over fair. the fence along with my fans. Well, this is fun because you know, Dad never played George Washington, but he, but he did play uh, Thompson in 1776, yes, where he read the dispatches of George Washington. Yes. And the costumes are very similar. And he has a white, he has a white wig, which he wore to bed the other night. He didn't leave it on very long, but really, I mean, what turns you on more than a wig, right? A white wig. I, well, just, <laughs> just, just let me process just, it for a minute. Yeah, you come out of the shower. <laughs> we don't know where the teeth no. are. We're not sure about the hearing aids. You can only see out of one eye. You got glasses with only one lens. He's wearing a powdered wig. You're both naked as the day you were born. And you're you're really taking the activity level over there at Oak Crest to a <laughs> to a whole new level. Wow. Are wow. you dressed? Are you dressed? Put what in your shirt. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Clean. Put some pants on. Do we have pants on? Yes, he's got pants. Oh, on. okay, good. <laughs> of course. How, how are you, Dad? Tuck him in. <laughs> Tuck him in. Good. Do what you're doing. <laughs> hey, good luck tonight. I hear it's the uh, opening night of the Follies. Break a leg, John. Do you have your hearing aids in? No. Oh, he doesn't have his hearing aids in. I'll tell him. I'll okay. tell him to break a leg. <laughs> Very All good. Right. All right, we got to go, but I love you, Mom, and thank you for signing those books. And, Dad, thank you for making that napkin holder. We're going to auction that thing off for big money for Same microworks. Well, I can't hear you. Okay. I'll tell you, Mom. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I'll tell you. Yes, sometimes I can't distinguish if it's a German or a... It could be anything. <laughs> Fortunately... You know, he's supposed to sing tonight. Dad doesn't sing. He, oh, he has doesn't. a he has a really good voice and no ear. He he hears no pitch. He has no sense of pitch at all. I know. Um I know. Will, will he be singing Edelweiss? Who yeah, knows like what this. he'll be singing? Edelweiss, Edelweiss, <laughs> every morning you greet me, soft and white, clean and bright. You look at me to see me. <laughs> That's how he's saying. That's my earliest memory of dad singing happy birthday to me. I was like eight or nine. And I remember what he's singing. And dad was just like, happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, it's a big night. I'll take pictures. You take pictures. And the next time we uh, circle back with one of these things, we'll share those photos and, um, celebrate what I hope will be uh, quite a haul for the uh, napkin made of the napkin holder made of sapel. Yes. Or sapel. Okay. Absolutely, honey. All right. All right. And this folks, was fun. Yeah. And I'll keep you posted on uh, the whole pellet and Chuck's ass and how all that works yeah, out. Yeah, well, she, don't she, bother. She, she, she doesn't want to know about it, Mike. She's yes, not you know picking what? up on that. Like, <laughs> I, I guarantee you in the comments below, <laughs> we're going to be, you're going to be fielding questions about this procedure. Oh, People dear. are going to want to know. Anyway, don't hang up, Mom. We got to upload this. As for all the rest of you, thanks for listening.